Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome back to Martial Arts Mayhem, where I predominantly talk about martial arts related content with an entertainment for the month of May. You know, even if one is a movie buff, they don't recall all the movies that they've seen, even ones that they like. It sometimes takes another person to give you a reminder of said movie. And that's the case with excessive force. Terry McCain is a hot-tempered Chicago detective who is hell-bent on taking down mobster Sal DeMarco. During a sting on one of DeMarco's operations, three million in cash goes missing. DeMarco believes one of the officers that were involved in the sting stole his money and he has ordered them all to be killed, which all except for Terry have been accounted for. Thus, Terry is given the authorization from his captain to go after DeMarco using any means necessary. First and foremost, I want to thank Nick McCallick of Ravens Films. I'll put his link down below. I've noticed that a lot of the movies that he reviews and a lot of the things that he talks about, we have fairly similar tastes and the dude looks like an amazing, amazing independent filmmaker. It was on his channel that I got reminded of Excessive Force because this was a movie that I saw in junior high that I actually really enjoyed. And it was because of this movie that I went back to see Karate Kid 3. What does Karate Kid 3 and Excessive Force have in common? Thomas Ian Griffith. Thomas Ian Griffith was just freaking awesome in this movie as well too. He stole the show in Karate Kid as the maniacal and menacing Terry Silva. Well now he plays a hot-headed Chicago detective who is the target of mobsters and is trying to bring them all down because they have killed his partners and his family members. Thomas Ian Griffith was one of those actors that really had talent and you could tell that he was getting pushed in the early 90s but the problem is I fairly blame the marketing of his movies because I didn't know of excessive force until I actually went to the movie theater and one of the teenagers that I actually kind of blackmailed was going to see it and you know his girlfriend was talking about how she like kind of liked the dude so I ended up seeing the movie and I'm like oh wow this this movie is pretty cool of it is Thomas Ian Griffin's performance. As Terry McCain, you can see that this dude is like at his wit's end with the frustration of the legal system where he has brought Sal DeMarco to court multiple times and the court has always released him due to some small technicality, which I could imagine could be frustrated for a police officer. To top it off, his martial arts technique in, on display in this movie it's pretty freaking damn cool it is not as over the top or flashy as as Cynthia Rothrocks might look and that's not saying that Cynthia Rothrocks technique and prowess is over the top it isn't it's just she moves so fast and so amazingly it might appear over the top to people where Thomas Ian Griffith's technique and performance is very grounded. Yes, you'll see him do a couple of high kicks, but they're mostly within combinations, which a lot of times when you're performing a high kick in a martial arts fight, you don't just automatically jump right in and do it. In addition, Thomas Ian Griffith had an amazing cast in this movie. I mean, first and foremost, we have Lance Hendrickson. Lance fucking Hendrickson. The actor is just freaking awesome, who plays Terry's captain. In the police force so another stellar performance from a great actor we also have Tony fucking Todd in this yes Tony Todd Candyman the guy that knows when death is coming in the Final Destination movies yes he is in this as well too playing one of Thomas's partners in this and you know you got Tony Todd in this what, what else can you say guy just airs coolness within every scene that he's in and he does that for this movie as well plus we have Burt Young playing Sal DeMarco yes 
Pauly from Rocky is the bad guy in this. Burt Young is one of those actors that, I won't lie, comes off as someone you kind of probably don't want to meet in person through the way he carries himself in films. But I gotta say, as a mob boss, he is just in his element. And anytime I see Burt Young in a movie, if he's playing a villain or your douchey friend, he always nails his performances extremely well. And James Earl Jones is in this. Need I say more? So we got a stellar cast. And to top it off, we have Thomas Ian Griffith's fighting capabilities, which are on awesome display in this movie. And this movie is not long. It is only an hour and 20 minutes. So every action scene that you get is actually a treat. Now, there is some issues with this movie. I'm gonna to have to confess. One of the things is this movie is fairly by the numbers cliche. It's a cop movie, partners die, cop is hothead, ends up getting involved in a bit of a controversy that is easy to see from miles away. So we got that going up against the movie. What we also have going up against the movie is the fact that while Thomas Ian Griffith's performance and fighting prowess is on awesome display, really does not have another martial artist to like, you know, go up against him. So you see him taking out all these mafiosos and hoods and thugs, but you don't really see him taking out another martial artist. Which kind of sucks because if you had a really cool mano and mano martial arts versus martial artist fight scene in this movie, it would be awesome. And I will admit that the movie does come off as meh. But, you know, it's still a fairly entertaining ride, you know? You have great action sequences, good choreography, awesome gunplay, really cool stunts, excellent performances by well-known character actors, everyone. Excessive force is cool. I can't say it's slanty, but it's a really, really high cool. It is definitely a great time. I would suggest any of y'all grab this movie if you're bored, you want a quick you know, entertaining ride, excessive force, definitely delivers. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below, give me a like, follow me on Facebook at Token Dave, or on Twitter at Token Dave 80, subscribe, and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. I'll catch all of you later.